Welcome fellow builders and thank you for joining me for this very first installment of our brand new tutorial series. Here's how it's done in my shop. Now today we're going to take a look at a project that was uh, suggested to me by um, fellow prop builder uh, Pat, Dead Things. Uh, if you haven't seen his videos yet, you should check him out. I'll put a link down below. But uh, he uh, asked me if I could put together a little video on how I build my little enclosures for my uh, motion sensors. Now if you've watched any of my videos and, and uh, seen how I control my prop controllers, my sensor of choice is a passive infrared sensor or a PIR. And you can get them in different ways. Um, these models come from, from China. Uh, you can get them for less than a buck and a quarter. Uh, really small, really easy to use. Uh, and um, and for our purposes as a haunt trigger they work real well not quite as good in daylight um, in the sunshine but they work really well at night uh, especially if you add a little debounce code uh, into your programming uh, will even help uh, the accuracy even more but if you just put them out like this one they're exposed to the elements uh, which is not a good thing and the other thing is they've got a very wide field of view with this big dome on it. So what I do is install them in some cheap PVC connectors and it protects them from the elements and it, uh, aim, I'm able to aim these exactly where I want so I can really dial in um, where I want these to be pointed when they trigger. So we'll go over how to do this pretty easy process. All the um, components um, other than the sensor itself um, I got from, from Lowe's. Um, my Home Depot didn't have quite these same connectors, so I like the ones from, from Lowe's a little bit better. Um, as far as a parts list, all you need is, this is an inch and a quarter uh, cap uh, with a three quarter inch bushing and um, the end of a half inch piece of electrical conduit. I use a ton of this half inch electrical conduit. I prefer it over uh, PVC one because I like the gray better. So if the white chips off, I have gray underneath showing instead of white, um, but also because it comes with this really nice connector on the end of it. And, uh, and when we're done doing a little modification, you'll see that will slide right into there and, um, and come together really nice. Now the build process starts by taking your three quarter inch bushing and uh, we need to remove the little rim that uh, is inside the pipe here. And I usually start uh, by taking a one inch spade bit in my drill press um, and quickly run through that. It takes out the majority of that um, uh, rim and then uh, clean it up with a sanding drum in my uh, Dremel tool and uh, finish taking out that rim and, and enlarge it just a little bit so that uh, your piece of PVC will now slide smoothly down through that. Now once I have the adapter cleaned out with the extension running smoothly through it, it's time to drill the hole on the back of the cap uh, to accept the wire for the PIR. Now uh, it has the hole has to be large enough not only for the wire but also to be able to get the connector through there. Um, I like having that big enough. I, it's, your PIR is going to sit right against the back of this cap and uh, this connector will stick up right through that hole there just a little bit. So you need to, to drill a large enough hole for that. Now I couldn't lay my hands on the proper size bit right away and I wanted to show you guys another bit uh, that I use anyway. So first went and, and uh, put a bit on my drill press and drilled the preliminary hole and then I used uh, a tool that I use a ton in my shop, uh, step drill bits, to get this hole um, reamed out to exactly the right diameter um, to accept uh, the, the wiring for the PIR. All right, the next step in the process, uh, once you've got those holes, holes drilled, is to go ahead and assemble this together. Um, without the PIR, you're going to need to do some painting here. Um, so I just put it all together the way I'm going to um, eventually have it put together uh, and just use some black uh, plastic paint, uh, the flat black. Um, get a couple good coats on this and paint it really black, uh, help it disappear 
uh, when we get it all done. Now, before you assemble this all together, uh, one little warning here as far as the wiring goes. Uh, standard cabling and the way most of our controllers are set up with the standard servo cord is uh, you've got uh, the three wires on here, the black, the red, the yellow, um, the black being ground, the red being power, and the yellow being signal. So that's how it's going to plug into your controller. Um, now some of the PIRs, like this one from Parallax, um, is wired exactly the same way. So it's just a simple matter to plug this thing right in and, and it, uh, the wiring corresponds. However, many of these that we get from overseas, the signal and the power wires are reversed. So it ends up going ground, signal, power. So uh, you have to actually swap two of these wires. Now that's a pretty simple process. Um, you can just take a very small screwdriver, um, pry up this little edge and pop these the two uh, wires out the signal and the power and swap them, slide them back in, pop them back in until they lock. Um, and then this is what you'll attach to your PIR. Now you have two choices when uh, selecting what kind of a wiring harness to attach to your PIR. Uh, you can use an extension which has a male side which is going to actually plug into your PIR and then a female side that will then have to be attached to a standard servo cable before attaching it to your controller um, because you need another male end to actually attach it to your controller. Um, I prefer to use a harness that's got two male ends. So this allows me to plug one end into the PIR and um, depending on the prop, and again I often don't know which prop or where these are going to go, I, I make up a half a dozen or so at a time. Um, if my PIR is going to be close to my controller, I can then plug this directly into my controller without having to add an extension. Um, and then if I do need um, something longer, it's not a big deal to plug in an extension and then plug this into my controller to extend the reach of my PIR. So, a uh, couple choices, figure out which one works best for you, um, and go with that. So, once you've changed or made the, the correction to, to the end of your wiring harness, um, it's a simple process to uh, add this. Just slide it into the bottom. And again, you will have already painted yours, so these will already be black. Slide the, this piece on, put that on, and then the last step in the process, or second to the last step, I usually drill a little hole and place a small screw in here um, to connect this all together. Uh, I like having it screwed together instead of glued, just in case that PIR goes bad and I need to replace it, it's easy to access it again. So once I've got that screw put in, my last step is to take some hot glue uh, and seal this up a bit. Uh, so I will usually put a bead of, uh, of hot glue around the connection here for the extension pipe and then uh, to seal up this back end and make sure that my wiring harness doesn't come disconnected, I add some uh, more hot glue to the back end here. And again, even if I have to take this apart, a little um, alcohol will, will soften up that uh, hot glue and allow me to disassemble this, replace the PIR, and not have to rebuild my entire enclosure. One final thing, that screw hole that you added to uh, hold this all together also is a nice mounting spot if you do need to put a bracket on it. Um, it's just a little L bracket from the hardware store. Um, I usually make a bunch of these, uh, get a bunch of uh, L bracket, and and drill some holes and cut a dozen of them at a time. A lot cheaper, but again, these are pretty cheap at the hardware store. And uh, you can just use that screw to attach that, and uh, that provides you a handy mounting spot. Um, one nice thing about uh, making your own out of lighter aluminum, if you need to bend them a little bit to, uh, to aim these exactly where you want to, they're a lot easier to bend than these steel ones are. If this is your first time joining us, please subscribe so that you can catch all the future episodes um, of our tutorial videos as well as all the other videos that we do for our haunt and the other projects. So um, until next time, keep building.